Hey everyone, my name is Derek Fisher, and I'm an external advisor to the Temple Cyber DIA program, which is the Defense and Information Assurance program. And that program is for not just working professionals, but also undergraduates looking to pursue a graduate degree in cybersecurity. And in our industry, we need all the help we can get. We continue to have more open positions than people that can fill them. And I'm a big proponent of sharing security with others, uh, whether they be uh, friends, family, uh, or in my organization. And one of the greatly underrepresented groups uh, within this industry is women. And uh, I'm raising my own daughter, who is a digital native. And that led me to really understand, you know, what can I do or, or try to uh, really think about what can I do in my position uh, and in with my network? How can I uh, help raise awareness of, of this uh, disparity in, in our, um, in our uh, cybersecurity field? And so um, that led me to doing things like writing a book on um, digital natives growing up uh, called Alicia Connected. Uh, but also I wanted to start reaching out to other women that are in this field that are doing great work and try to highlight the work that they're doing their experience, the journey, how they got there, and really what makes um, they what makes them really enjoy what it is that they're doing. So with that in mind, I wanted to set up a, some interviews with uh, some of these women that are in our field that are doing great work, and uh, I hope you enjoy them. Thank you. All right, welcome everybody. And today we have Mia Harkins with us, and we're going to have a conversation about expanding diversity in cybersecurity. So, Mia, welcome to this conversation. And I'd like to understand a little bit about your current role and what your day in life looks like. Yeah, hi, Derek, and thanks for having me. And uh, welcome, everybody. Um, so, currently, I am the director of application security for a fintech company. And um, I've, I've actually spent a, a few years, probably close to five years in this space, the cybersecurity space. Um, I will tell you on a day-to-day -day basis, it, it has been uh, a different aspects of uh, focuses in the cybersecurity space. Um, I think for myself, uh, learning cybersecurity and really applying what you have learned is really important. Um, and, and, and for me, the rewarding side of the house is really um, seeing that your assets and, and, you know, what you consider a crown jewels, uh, are protected and, um, you know, behind the scenes, you know, that all of the work it takes to actually secure an application or secure your assets, uh, to me, it's rewarding to see that happening and knowing that what you have done, uh, to be able to secure, uh, your assets, um, and so others can benefit from uh, what you have done. So, uh, I would probably say what I do in a day in a life of uh, uh, in the application security perspective, I would say um, it's not always one thing, uh, focusing on vulnerabilities or uh, protecting an application. I think it's a lot of things that is under the protection, the detection, the monitoring, as well as uh, you know empowering and working with um, others to educate them on what security is. Yeah, and and. You know, I found too, like, especially in the security space, that it's hard to look at technology, diff you know, any differently uh, than when you have that security mindset or when you have a, a security background, you look at technology and you understand like how you may not understand the ins and outs of how it works, but you certainly understand that, that a lot of technology these days creates, you know, uh, vulnerabilities and, and creates uh, security issues. So having that, mm -hmm. that lens and, and being able to you know, understand what the security issues are is, is uh, it's definitely, you know, needed in, in the engineering space. So I'd like to understand a little bit about, you know, your, your journey through engineering. So how did you get involved with engineering and how did you, you know, get mm -hmm. to uh, get into security? So I have been in information technology for uh, over 20 years. And uh, in that space, I've, I've learned and I've dibbled a little bit and dabbled a little bit in the security aspect of uh, the engineering uh, side of the house. But I think the past couple of years, um, you know, I focus a lot more on security. I was actually assigned to have the innovation and research team uh, for a previous company. And uh, to me, I, I think that that uh, allowed me to learn a lot about security and cybersecurity and what that, uh, and what that entails. Um, you know, I think traditionally we've always uh, viewed cybersecurity as really the 
blocking and tackling of issues and, uh, you know, be able to recover quickly. Um, I think there's more to that. And as I spent a lot more time in the cybersecurity space, I learned that there's a lot of creativity that uh, needs to happen. There's a lot of intuitive thinking and even emotional thinking as well to be able to partner with your uh, counterparts. Uh, so learning cybersecurity for me um, is really getting into the day-to-day -day type of work and really working with our uh, security counterparts as well as our security organization to understand a little bit more. So I would probably say that um, I got into this space um, you know, thinking that I can um, really kind of change the way that we think, not just from the security group, but also from our counterparts to be able to have them understand that security can be part of their process um, as opposed to an afterthought. Yeah, and I, I often think about um, a, a role in security as being a salesperson. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of, you know, I know it, even in my role, uh, a lot of what I do is, is try to sell security to engineering. And so, yep. you know, mm -hmm. that that requires um, good uh, relationships that requires us to be able mm -hmm. to have conversations um, and really be able to put security in the right context. So engineering understands like mm -hmm. what the issues are that we're trying to tackle. So great. OK, absolutely. And, and just to add to that, I think in our role as, uh, you know, managers and, and uh, um in this space, um, influence and persuasion are also the key. Yep. Um, I think if you if you have that uh, uh, type of influence and persuasion, I think that uh, you know working with our counterparts is uh, definitely a, a better partnership. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what what do you think is the most you know rewarding part of your your current role? What do you what do you think is mm -hmm. you know uh, the the best part of of what you do today? Um, I think uh, you know being creative. Uh, thinking outside of the box, um, and, and really challenging the norm of how we're practicing our cybersecurity um, uh, work, right? And, and, and to me, it's, you know, putting forth different way of thinking in order to protect our assets and, and, and our, uh, um, our products. Um, I've always, uh, you know, when I actually started in this uh, practice, even in IT, I would say that we've always actually have um, fell back into the traditional way that we've actually uh, developed uh, and, and secure our products. And, and I think for me, the rewarding side of it is to take what I've learned and really throwing it into uh, how we've actually have done cybersecurity, but really um, you know, putting that process on its side and challenging the way that we've done things to make uh, the practice a lot more effective. So that's really rewarding to me to see the change in the evolution of cybersecurity and how we're doing, uh, uh, you know, what are we doing to actually protect our assets? Yeah, and that's hard, right? Because it's not, mm -hmm. um, you know, especially in security, you don't see the changes overnight. Um, you know, a lot of times right. mm -hmm. the things that we're doing in security, they, they, take, they take time. It's, uh, um, you know, it's influencing, mm -hmm. it's, it's large projects, it's, uh, mm -hmm. You know, it's not unless you're trying to firefight a critical vulnerability, it's not something that you're going to be able to change overnight. So there's a lot of patience involved as well. So absolutely. Okay. And and also the landscape is always changing. You know, I yep. mean, I think the threats and attacks are always changing. It's getting more sophisticated. So if you are not challenging the way that you're uh, um, securing your assets, I think that, uh, you know, you'll, you'll easily become obsolete and yep. uh, you'll have other issues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what gets you up in the morning? Um, I think what motivates me is really learning and problem solving. Um, and, and for me, it goes hand in hand. And, uh, you know, learning um, is really important to me. I always like to keep learning, but learning and applying what I've learned to actually solve a problem is uh, also very, very motivating for me. And on the flip side, if I'm not learning and if there's no problem to solve, that that tells me that either I've you know I've already um, you know mastered what I have learned, which is probably not the case, or you know uh, I need more challenges. So um, that's always been a um, really kind of a pulse check for me uh, as far as um, you know being motivated. So for me, it's both learning and problem solving uh, that gets me motivated 
in anything I do, not just in the professional world. Yeah. And I can relate to that. I, I mm-hmm. continuously have tabs that are queued up in, in my browser that, uh, you know, for research and learning and, and things like that. And, and mm-hmm. the tabs keep on growing and, and I don't always get through, uh, to, you know, to what, uh, what I need mm-hmm. to, but you know, the, the thing about the security space is that there's, there's always something to learn. There's always new exactly. technology. Everything's evolving. There's new attacks. Um, so there's there's never a shortage of, of new things to learn. And, and that's usually pretty exciting. So, yeah. Right. And, and, and it's part of the reason why I, uh, you know, wanted to come into uh, the cybersecurity uh, space as well as uh, being part of really a team of people to be able to actually, um, you know, uh, protect our assets in, in the best way possible. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So this conversation, you know, a lot of what we're trying to do here is, is really bring that next generation of, of young women into this, yeah. into this mm-hmm. field. So, you know, some of the re- uh, questions I wanted to ask around, you know, why should, mm-hmm. uh, if, if you're talking to the, you know, I have a 10 year old daughter, so, and I know you have uh, daughters as well. So, you know, how do you, mm-hmm. how do you uh, talk to them about, and maybe it's not, you know, I always tell my, uh, when I'm, uh, you know, when I mentioned to my daughter that I'm an engineer and, and that, you know, my, my mm-hmm. stepmom and my, my dad and, and uh, my father-in-law were all, enge- you know, came in the engineering space and she doesn't want to mm-hmm. have anything to do with engineering. Um, but so it's not about, you know, trying to drag mm-hmm. them into engineering, but, you know, I, I think it's about breaking down the stigma around uh, about women in, in engineering and, and um, mm-hmm. you know, what's, what's kind of your advice for, uh, women and uh, I know this is a, a, a tough one because there's a lot mm-hmm. of uh, space here. But you know, what's what do you think um, if you're talking to your daughters or, or somebody else's daughter about uh, you know getting into the the engineering uh, space and, and technology and and uh, security? Like, what do you think is um, why should why should someone a young person look into that? Um, so I you know when I when I go and participate in uh, programs for uh, girls, uh, um, actually participate in recruiting. I do have a lot of conversations with a lot of uh, uh, students and uh, you know, the, the way that I think about it um, and, and the way that I would interpret it to uh, you know, the, the young women who may be interested in uh, coming into a space, I would say this, um, most women are non-linear thinkers, right? And what I mean by that is, you know, the creative thinking, intuitive thinking, and an emotional thinking. Um, you know, we tend to fall into that type of uh, uh, thinking and they do complement the linear thinking, which is, you know, I got a problem, I got to solve it. And, uh, you know, really the traditional blocking and tackling. And unfortunately, when you're watching shows and when you're seeing uh, what's out there, a lot of times you're seeing that uh, the blocking and tackling that's happening. And sometimes it can get overwhelming and it can be intimidating for girls when they see that and, that, and, and that's what they think cybersecurity is about. And what I always uh, do is I always uh, tend to really kind of focus on the other things, right? The preventive, the detection, uh, you know, the, the, the uh, monitoring, that is where the creativity is needed when you actually are focusing on those aspects of cybersecurity. Um, and, and, and my message to women is, uh, are really kind of ask those questions. What, the, what are the other aspects of cybersecurity as opposed to blocking and tackling uh, issues and problems? And I think for the companies out there, you know, if you're looking for talent, I think it's important to really kind of focus on those, um, you know, as well as the immediate issues and problem solving. Um, because, you know, in, in talking to a lot of the, uh, the students, especially the, the female students, knowing that there's different aspects to the space, I think will give them a little bit more incentive to really kind of do a little bit more exploration and trying to understand security and cybersecurity a little bit more. Um, it's unfortunate that you do see a lot of the blocking and tackling when you're watching shows or when you're talking to people. Um, but, you know, I, I think you know, if we all can actually provide that message out there and send that message that there's more to it than, and, than just, uh, you know, uh, resolving and remediating the issues quickly, I think that that will open up a lot of opportunities for, uh, you know, young women and young girls to be able to explore. 
Yeah. And, and that's, you know, that's a great point. Cause you know, you look at security as a whole and, and it's not, it's not about chasing every vulnerability at some point you need Actually. to get ahead of it. Right. At some point you need to think about how do we stay ahead of these vulnerabilities so that we're not mm -hmm. constantly uh, putting out fires, but we're, we're not mm -hmm. starting the fire to begin with. So, and, and that Correct. requires mm -hmm. creative thinking that doesn't, you know, require people to, to sit around mm -hmm. and, and um, you know, take, take things as they come in and, and try to solve them. It, it's, it's about mm -hmm. thinking more longer term. So yeah, that, that's, that's a great Absolutely. way. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So really difficult question. What are, what are some of your hobbies? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would probably say um, I don't really have one hobby. Um, I like to do different things. I think uh, my two biggest um, extracurricular activities, I would say, is uh, cooking. I like cooking. Um, I used to hate it when I was younger, but uh, as I've gotten older, I, I, I really enjoy cooking. Um, I don't know why, but, um, you know, it's a challenge for me to really kind of learn to make something new. I guess I maybe some of it kind too of is that you get, you know, you, you after a long day of of especially, you know, mm -hmm. sitting in front of a screen or, or something like that, you know, it, yes. it's a change of pace. So it's, uh, I, I like yes. them too, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, and I think the other thing is, is that, you know, along the, uh, the lines of what I said with rewarding and you see, uh, you know, you see the fruits of your labor, it's the same thing with cooking as well. Um, I think the other thing is, uh, you know, um, exercising as well. For me, it's not just, um, you know, getting in shape. It's really more of uh, the opportunity for me to, relax and and think about things a little bit uh, differently from a different perspective and you have the time to actually think creatively right. as opposed to um you know sitting behind a desk and uh you know having to think on the fly uh for me it's just uh you know having that time to yourself yeah no i, I i'm the same mm -hmm. you know i like running biking and and yeah those are yep. usually the times where you just throw some I listen to music when I exercise, so it's a good way to just kind of zone out and let the exactly. subconscious, you know, mind slip in. So, yeah. All right. Um, so what about uh, any resources that you use to kind of help you, you know, stay on top of technology mm -hmm. security? What, you know, what are you listening to, watching, looking at, you know? Uh, so I, I would say if, if I were to go back and, and, and talk about how I actually started to understand a little bit more about uh, security and cybersecurity, and then of course the ongoing, I think that there are definitely two levels of, of uh, learning and resources that I have done. I think the first one is the foundational type of learning where you actually sign up for a class, whether it's a university or something online, and uh, you're able to understand really the foundational um, aspects of cybersecurity. Um, you know, understanding identity access management, understanding, uh, you know, uh, um, security from the code perspective, from the infrastructure perspective, as well as uh, the physical security as well. It's important to see how they're related and it's important to see why they are, um, you know, why they have their different um, pillars. So that is important. I think the, the ongoing uh, side of the house for me is, uh, you know, reading articles, uh, working on certain projects that will really enable me to understand uh, what else is out there and what other type of, uh, um, I, I guess, maybe concepts are out there. Um, and then of course, going to conferences and really listening and understanding what's happening out there in the marketplace and what's happening out there when it, uh, new threats and attacks are out there. What do we do? What are the pre best practices that are out there? And I would say this for people who are interested in this space and, and really kind of looking for a, a company, um, you know, uh, um, I would say you should look for a company that continues to invest in education uh, on security and cybersecurity. I think it's very, very important that you continue to learn. If you not continue to learn and if a company isn't investing in that type of ongoing education, you're going to become obsolete pretty quickly. And, you know, the company itself, uh, you know, I, I think that they're, you know, if, if security is not that important, I think that that's something that uh, you need to think about uh, uh, for yourself and, and for your um, career path. So to me, it's, it's both. It's, it's you yourself uh, um, educating yourself and really kind of keeping on top of what's happening out there in, uh, you know, the cybersecurity world. But it's also making sure that your company is also investing in that as well. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. 
I guess, uh, you know, for those that may be watching this later on, it's, what is it, early 2021, I guess May of 2021, and uh, conferences are still limited, at least in person, you know, a lot of conferences yeah. are going on virtually, uh, but yeah, the, you know, conferences are always a good uh, place to get, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, at least keep up on what's going on, especially around the latest stuff that's going on. Um, conferences mm -hmm. are, are a good place to go for that, so good. Definitely. All right, so um where can people connect with you you know if if you're so open to sharing that <laughs> you can certainly uh, i am actually in linkedin um so you can certainly uh um, look at my profile in linkedin um you know as a individual who um has been uh you know networking a lot i think the easiest way for me to actually uh um, get in touch with uh, individuals, colleagues, uh, as well as vice versa, is actually through LinkedIn. So Good. it's Mia Harkins. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Mia, and uh, thank, thank you. you for you know this time and uh, yeah, mm -hmm. great discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.